Right. No, um, I, I can do that if you want. Yeah, please. Just okay, one. very short one. Okay. So I'd like to invite the good spirits that are here present in this spiritual center to inspire us. May we open our hearts and our minds to the teachings of the spirits that they brought through Alan Kardec, through the mediums that worked with Alan Kardec. So we receive the consolation at the level of our mind and hearts that we are looking for. We want to thank Jesus for his teachings, for what he brought to us so we can open our spiritual eyes from now on and begin with more responsibility this journey and may we enjoy this incarnation much more than the other incarnations in the past with more awareness more compassion more understanding and more respect for one another thank you and so be it thank you pardon me while i go and make sure i share our live feed don't mean to be rude um, so last week we were here and we started on chapter two of what is spiritism by Helen Kardec. Um, I'm just showing for the people on the internet. We all know what we were doing. <laughs> and I'm sorry for Scott since it's been, it's been a minute. So, um, chapter two is, um, Alan Kardec is just talking about elementary notions of spiritism and, um, um, we did send out the reading. Actually, we sent out the entire chapter as a PDF. Um, so anybody that has it or doesn't, you know, if you don't have it, um, you can get the PDF downloaded. We can contact me or Cynthia, and we can we can give it to you. Um, and it actually has the entire chapter. So I actually asked everybody to read sections one and two. He starts with preliminary remarks, and then the next section is concerning spirits. But last week we only got to talk about item number one, and that there's uh, 21 items I think altogether. <laughs> so um, sometimes, sometimes I, I kind of just like skip ahead. But I figured since we had so much to say about the one item, we'll just keep uh, we'll just go, go ahead and start again on number two, and then um, and then go from there. So uh, did you get a chance to read it? Or? Uh, a little bit. So it might be good if you do a summary intro. I know you usually have questions. That would be excellent. Yeah, we might be able to. Um, I'll borrow your book yeah. to it. You don't need it. That's true. It's short. Right. Yeah, we might actually just be able to read the oh. the second the second item. Um, the first item was um, we were what we were actually talking about is what does it take to make you believe in spiritism? Um, and they were talking about how a lot of times you have somebody new to the Spiritist Center. And they will say like, oh, well, I'd like to see a mediumship group. I'd like to see you guys communicating with the spirits. Because that's really like what we're all about in one sense. Um, in another see sense, to believe it. in another <laughs> sense, though, like we, we don't allow that. Like we really don't allow outside people. And there's there's good reasons for it. Um, and, and what we were really talking about was that just because somebody, now they say that's what they want, you know, but just because they get what they want, it doesn't mean that... Um, that they'll actually become a believer. Um, so if somebody has the idea already that spirits don't exist and they see um, somebody speaking to a spirit or speaking as a spirit, um, you know, communicating, they'll just come up with a reason why they're faking it or it can't be real or, or whatever. They'll come up with something, some kind of argument or, oh, this is ridiculous. So if somebody has a preconceived notion already, you're not really going to convince them just by, um, just by having them witness some phenomena. Um, so last week we were talking about each one of us, like what was our experience, what led us either to believe or not to believe, <laughs> you know, why, why we're here. Um, and so that was a pretty interesting conversation. And, and the second part of item one is about how important it is to study spiritism. Like, I don't want to say in its entirety, but get a very broad knowledge of spiritism before you start to witness the phenomena. So I'm just wrapping up last week. Right. Kind of and the other interesting thing you said last week was that it is hard to answer a simple questions with the few words you were saying about this too. 
Yeah, because any like any time you have a, a newcomer to the Spiritist Center, um, they'll ask like one simple little small question, but the answer is like so all encompassing. Like you need to <laughs> like you can't just answer like a little question because there's so many different um, prerequisites to to answer it. So it's very hard to um, answer a simple question with a simple answer mm. with, with Spiritism, which is just funny. I don't think Spiritism itself is really that complicated, but but when you, I don't know, I guess I guess when you start asking certain que questions that people come up with, um, they'll kind of lead you <laughs> into like a very long conversation, which yeah. is why we were talking about... context, I guess, that, that yeah. you need a context to color it with, so uh -huh. the yeah. answer, you know, could be you know, portrayed in the right light. Yeah. Otherwise, it, it would be open to a variety yeah. of interpretations without the context. There are levels. Yeah. I think that's levels. where it becomes a little complicated, where you, if you have a little bit more knowledge, then it helps and, uh, greatly. And it's, it's hard because sometimes, like, I'll be talking to, like, you know, a friend of mine or something about, you know, they want to know what I'm doing in these meetings. And I'll say, like, oh, we're, we're <laughs> like, this is what we did. Like, this is what we did today. And they'll, like, immediately... <laughs> They'll immediately like raise objections to it. I'll be like, "Well, no, no, you don't understand because of this." And then I'll have another objection. And be like, "Well, you know, we covered that here." And, like, you really can't. <laughs> it's really tough to, you know, um, if somebody like really doesn't want to believe it, you know, they'll they'll come up with a reason. Or just, I mean, not not necessarily that. Just somebody that's, you know, I mean, like all of us were here because we want we had questions and and we um, we didn't we didn't stop at the surface of the thing. <laughs> so, you know, we wanted to go deeper into everything. Um, so that's why we're saying prior study is very important. Um, if you if you want to be, not even you don't have to be a spiritist, but if you want to if you want to know what we're talking about, you really have to pick up the books and, and read them. Um, you know, and and we're we're happy to help people answer questions. But most of the time, like if you're if you're new and asking questions, we'll sort of point you to the literature and say this is where this is where you should begin. And that was all like <laughs> what we were talking about last week, item one. Um, so item two is talking about, um, he says, those who are unfamiliar with spiritism believe that spirit phenomena can be produced in the same way that other phenomena can be, do, be produced in physics and chemistry and experiments. Um, so I, I've seen this before because I would, before I found spiritism, I would see a friend who was a channeler and she would channel at any time, any place, any person, any being, alive, dead, fictitious, on another planet, you know, and, and this was, you know, her belief and, and, you know, the people that went, you know, were pretty much in accordance with that, um, that, that it was her will that would allow, you know, make the spirit manifest. Um, so, so the question we have is, do the spirits manifest on our terms, or does the spirit have its own free will? Mm, great point. Free will. But, I mean, your actions affect what kind of spirits you're attracting in the first place, right? Your thoughts and your actions are going to affect what kind of... There, there's a little bit of... Yeah, different, different topic, though, I think. You know, no, no, it's... it's I have a... Say that uh, question again. Say with my own experience with my the spirit that I channel. Okay. So yes, I mean if they wanted to. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I wasn't <laughs> Stanley has the floor. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead. Sorry. I apologize on Scotsman. Yes. The the story <laughs> that I channel very clearly ever since I've been in touch with him, unless I invoke his presence. He is quiet. So, and this is the uh, this has been my experience. And and uh, I mean, and what Alan Kardec says is is if a spirit wants to come, uh, he or she will will come. But if a spirit doesn't want to come, then you know it's not it's not we can't like command the spirit to join us. You know, is <laughs> is you know I you know by in the name of you know. <laughs> I, I, I summon well, the, He comes easily enough as long as I'm open to him. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he says, I'm always there, but you have, you have to ask. And listen, be ready to receive. And, yeah. and what Manny was saying is, is true, too, because um, it's not it, in a certain context. <laughs> you know, like, it's not, it's not, it's about us, um, I want to say, 
we will, through our actions, attract different kinds of spirits. So what I was thinking, when, like when you said that too, what I mentioned my friend, the channeler, now I, I believe she was in fact channeling. I just don't believe that she was channeling the spirits she said she was channeling. You know, the, the famous people, the celebrities, uh, my cat, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't really believe that these were true. So she might have uh, spirit friends that have traveled with her, but as, if we study spiritism, we know about the orders of spirits. And we know that some of them are, are um, frivolous spirits. Some are uh, suedo, learned spirits. So they'll try to act like they know a lot of stuff. And, and this was what I found. Like when I started studying, I was like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. I used to go and say like, okay, I'm just going to hold the things that I like. And I'll just like forget about the things I don't like. But, you know, there was, there was, there was some good stuff. Like when, this, when in the beginning of the channel about love and about being free and about, you know, experiencing life and all this stuff it sounded really good and as it went on and on it turned into like <laughs> these like arc, like strange messages like they just started getting weird and like like one of them was talking about like standing up to the government and stuff and this is like right after saying like we need to love and experience life and all this stuff and then it's like stand up to the government and i was like it's like this is not you know spiritism because this is a little weird it's it's like before studying spiritism and after studying spiritism i started paying like more attention to, to the messages mm. like oh my god okay um but um but it's it's it is so it is kind of true like it's not necessarily that a spirit will i, I think of them like cats you know like they scientists i, I read this on facebook it must be true that scientists, <laughs> scientists prove that cats can actually understand us, like when we're calling them. It's just they don't want to come, you know. <laughs> or, or if they do, if they do, they will, you know. And it's, I think the spirit is sort of the same way. But if the spirit, you know, if it's if it wants to, it, it will. And if it doesn't want to, it's not going to do it. Well, there, there's a reason. I, I would like to ask define manifestation. So I was thinking that you were referring to a physical manifestation. Where we come from, a spirit, invisible entity to a visible entity. This is what I thought you were asking. So I just want to clarify. I think what Alan Carter is talking about mostly is like mediumship meetings and groups. So mm -hmm. it, has, it could be psychophony, it could be um, mediumistic writing, um, or or they might even be talking about turning tables too at this at this time. So this you know? so so the question was, and I think if I have this correct is do they have free will to do that or are they called and they obey is that kind of where the question is yeah, being i mean that's kind presented? of that's kind of the question so, so i would i would say that they have their free will but they're not going to impose and and they would need the medium in a right state in order to utilize them as a tool right so well a right. tool is what they are so i mean i'm not for you to acquire so I asked. Right. So if the, no, if no, the medium, he's, he's saying like we would be the tool if we're if I'm a medium. Then right. I would so be the, so again, okay, if, if the medium wasn't yeah. in a state where they could be effective in, in or utilizing directly, the, the, directly also. the incorrect the incarnated spirit, then then their free will, even though they might would like to, hmm. they would not because the state of the, the human being isn't ready to receive. There's some dynamic or energy associated where it wouldn't be appropriate, wouldn't work. Um, but it still would indicate the spirit has a free will. But in addition, I guess the incarnate spirit, myself sitting here, I would have to be in receivership. I would have to have my will to be open to be a team. So I think there's two components to this. So I'd like to see where this goes personally. Does that make sense? Am I yeah, it, sense? it does. And um, I was wondering, and and this is also a question: Are there mediums that cannot help? To receive, uh, or or to channel spirits, you does that exist? No control that, over it. Yeah, that against their will, like say say I'm medium and I say, hey spirits of uh, over there, I don't want to receive anything. Sure to do. But but they still do. Where you know against their will, does that exist? We talk about this a lot when we talk about mediumship and insanity. Luigi gave a lecture about it recently about some people. Um, are you find them in a in a psych ward and actually what they have is mediumship and they just don't know they're not educated to control it mm -hmm. you know exactly and, and medicine is trying to give them prescription exactly. this is one one kind of case okay. the other kind of case is that um, uh, a, a high level like a good spirit 
will never, never do it like at an inappropriate time or, yeah. or in you know not the right condition. Yeah. The okay. thing is, if we go to the root, the root, the spirits say the um, we always have the last word. We always have we the free will. We yeah. have Incredible. the last word. Sure. So Choice. what for us seems like, oh, I have no control, it does. Okay. If we look into the behavior, the thoughts, the feelings of that person, it's totally out of control. It's not, it doesn't happen to someone that is well-balanced, that meditates. That, that's, what I want, that's what I wanted so, to get. Bottom so. line, bottom line, but that's very, there is a silver line, very thin line, because when you, someone can be here and say, I have no control. It comes and it, it takes me and I'm already there. We, you guys have never seen videos of, of uh, surveillance cameras where they, people, I've seen a bunch of them. People are in a supermarket or liquor store. They're about to get some some drinks, whatever they do. They some before. spirits, distilled spirits. And the, and spirits, spirits, and the spirits, spirits, spirits come and they the go video. like, and then these kids from YouTube, they say poltergeist phenomena, blah, blah, blah. You can see surveillance camera, the person has no idea that they have this uh, relationship with the spirits and they do. But bottom line, bottom line, bottom line, you are ignorant because you want, because if you have this situation and you don't look for an answer, of course you go to the doctor, the doctor, the doctor will say that you are cuckoo, right? But if you're not satisfied, if you think you're not cuckoo and you don't go further, like we live in an area of, era of no excuses. Come on, everything is free in our internet, literature, we can find literature about this. But for a lot of people, they will say in our face, no. You're wrong because I have no control of what's going on with me. It is because they have no control what's going on in their life, like ever, in general, thoughts. They have no will. They have no will. Exactly. Right. They're, the it's events are over. taking over right. their lives, people, emotions, right. and they have not, They have control of nothing. And I would just say, like, if there's somebody that feels that way, I would tell them, like, because I've been in a place similar to that in my past, where like I was in a low, low place and like the only thing that helped me was prayer, you know, and then yeah. after I started praying, Perfect. asking for help, right. help started to come and I had to actually be open to accept the help because mm -hmm. I had been in the same place before and not open to accept the help mm -hmm. and I stayed in the same place for a long time. So, so I, I feel sort of like Andre Louise in the, um, in the, mm -hmm. um, well, the prayer, the, help, the prayer helps eliminate the clutter. The, the, the swirl cage in your head. You are absolutely right because the spirits through Andre Luis they say that prayer is yeah. the antidote for vampires, spiritual vampires or any kind of spirits. The prayer refocus your mind. Yeah. yeah. The prayers the spirits they say that the prayers they create a wall, a invisible wall in your home or wherever you are. The spirits there are uh, with not with the good intention and they cannot enter your home or wherever you are because you are surrounded by your own protection which is the prayer and now the scientists like Greg Braden Dr. Greg Braden is searching for those ancient types of style of prayer going back to the past and learning that we really need because they found out that you know when you are praying the neuroscience and you're praying all sort of things happen in your brain and and you know so scientists are now studying this through neuroscience but the spirits from with Andreas in a 1945 was telling that prayer as you said mm -hmm. that was spot on prayer is the Antidote. It is the medicine. I mean, I think we're we might but, be we might be wandering a little bit off our topic. It, it, it's who wants uh, fault. He, yeah. He, but yeah. But thank you. He but, took me out of the. But yeah, let's answer now. Now. But yeah, I mean, and and what Alan Kardec is saying in this item is about mediumship is that we have to be in the correct conditions. We have to do the best we can to make the the proper conditions, which still goes back to what you're saying about 
what kind of spirits are we going to attract? <laughs> you know, are we going to attract high order spirits or lower order spirits? Mm -hmm. Or you know, um, how how you say in English the affinity? In Portuguese, we say affinity. the law of affinity a lot. But sometimes I say this word, and people Americans they make funny it's, faces to me, like the dogs when they. It's go, just not a word that's used so commonly, but it is. The I correct think in English word. it means the law of attraction. Um, that kind of thing. just means that you're attracted to something. And yeah, the, yeah law of, I think the way it's translated is law of attraction. Yeah. Law of affinity? Like when you, manif when you manifest something? Yeah, no, what he was no, saying. No, but affinity is an English word, meaning right. things yeah. that are never right. Things that, no, not, not infinity. Uh, uh, affinity. 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 Uh, like affinity. We attract, you know, if you're a right. good person, you'll attract other good people. If you're, negative, oh, okay. so, if you're a negative person, you'll attract, you know, negative negativity in your life. So you you understand good affinity. Mm -hmm. It's just okay. it's not a word that's so commonly used. Oh, okay. okay. A lot of times when you read like when I read Andre Luis, I had to keep a dictionary. <laughs> Me too. You know, like for, Me too. Just yeah. even though, it, and sometimes you think you know the meaning of a word until you actually look it up. You know, so so sometimes it's good. You know, but then the Thank spirits you. say we put too much emphasis on words here. I know. But we we still have to <laughs> we still have to figure things out on our right. on our own. So. Um, you know, I hear many times uh, people say, people deny that there is a God, and they say, well, if there is a God, why would, why would this and this be happening? So this is the same question that we have here, that you're, that you're asking, that, uh, uh, can he interfere, or can his spirits interfere <clears throat> without our, uh, that we have nothing to do with, we have no uh, control of Well, that's exactly the point, because it, it, <laughs> You have no control unless the controller is present. This is it. And so when you start praying, you know, you're, you're reversing the situation and you're asking for help. Anyway, that was just like, <laughs> that was deep. About. I was just like, trying to, <laughs> I was trying to comprehend. But no, you're right. Because cause really some people... Some people will say things like, well, all you can do now is pray. Like, like, oh, well, that's like your last resource. It should be like your, the first thing we do. You know, which is why we start our meetings with prayer. Uh, hopefully, like, <laughs> hopefully. I mean, sometimes we have our meetings. We start with the prayer. And I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, I got to go live on Facebook. I have this to do later. You know, you know, but if we like really get into it and listen to the prayer or repeat it in our head or like even say our own prayer, mm -hmm. like in unison, um, then it really does Sometimes take us, do and, it, and it helps like the whole room, yeah. you know, the energy of the whole room. Absolutely. When I was uh, relearning my Catholicism, like repentance is a big part of it. They relate it to sin, but when you look deep into that word, uh, repentance, it's a change of thought, change of mind, and that's what, what the word really means. So this ties in with, with what we're talking here. Mm. The refocus, change your mind, prayer mm. helps that, meditation helps that. It's a lot of things we can do to help refocus so we can harmonize, we can refocus through spirits. Mm. Oh, yeah, the is you can do something wrong, you can admit you did something wrong, but that doesn't mean you change your ways. Right. Mm. Uh, repentance is like you admitted it and now you're going to not do it again. You're going to actually right. learn from it. And then yeah. Right, yeah. from your mistakes, right. From your you negativity is disarmony. You say, hey, I'm sorry, but then you're going to do it, you know, you just do it again. Instead of creating disharmony or dislikes or enemies, you're going to create friends and love and, and harmony. So it's changing your ways, yeah. Change your mind, change your focus. It's all the same thing. And then uh, it kind of ties into what I was like when I was reading the section. We're talking about creating the, the right conditions for for manifestation or or for whatever we're trying to to accomplish. And um, we're talking about how some people just refuse to believe when they get there, or or, or other people are just curious and they, they don't really. But um, what I was thinking is, how can we expect to get results if we're unwilling to take the correct action um, hmm. that, that's needed? Very. And that's common sense now, right? So now it should be, shouldn't it? Correct I mean, action. Yeah. 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 There are yeah. some baseline yeah. things we have to do here. Well, you, you uh, through, through experience, applies. through experience, uh, the right action, uh, you need to, to do the wrong action to create the right action <laughs> through through trial and error to get that to right. If you want to make an omelet, it's always right. From your perspective, it's right. always right. From your perspective, everyone's perspective, it's always correct. It's your truth. It's I, your truth, yeah. I'm, I'm guilty of it yeah. sometimes because sometimes yeah. I'll wish for things so yeah. hard and then I won't like get up 
off of the thing and, and do it, you know? <laughs> but, but I see it, I see it a lot too. Like people, um, how many people at work, like at my job are saying like, Oh, I, I, I hope I win the lottery this week. And it's like, well, did you buy a ticket? <laughs> that's, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. You know? But there's so many things. Um, we got to take the action, but, and then with that, um, um, so, so the people that come expecting something and when they don't get what they ask for, they conclude that there are no spirits after mm. all. Mm. Mm. So, so I was thinking about it this week, um, during, not in our, not in our course of magnetism when, and Friday night when we were doing the magnetism treatments, I started thinking about how many, like, uh, cause, cause we have some patients that I don't want to say the patient is difficult. The disease is difficult <laughs> that we're working with. But, um, and sometimes I think like, oh, this is just not working. And I, I started to think, I don't know if I was inspired or what, I started to think like, don't give up just because you're not getting the results that you mm -hmm. want out of it. Like keep, keep doing it, keep working, you know? And how many times have I given up in my life just because uh, I didn't think I was getting what I needed from it or it was like, oh, this isn't working or, or whatever, <laughs> you know? It, it goes back, right, it's the, the intention, right? The intention not attention attention also but the intention the feeling um so you can let's give an example you know you could you can say you love your cat but the way you act towards your cat shows whether you love it or not right mm -hmm. so if you really love it it's it's not the words it's the thing it's the doing it's the feeling it's yeah. the intention the thought of it you know this oh, yeah so just like they're uh, referring to here with the person who's coming, who's closed and not open to exploring, for example, um, you know, in a different regard, like at a mediumship table, okay, these people have to prepare themselves to receive and do the work. They're getting work through the spirit as a medium, maybe doing rescue, helping other spirits, for example. So in this regard, there's many ways that we have to be open in order to receive, which means to view or whatever we're trying to talk here. So you've seen a hundred times of people that have this negative disposition and they, you know, they just have mis everything miserable happens to them. They're walking around, but then here's the person who's always smiling and it just seems that just gold happens to them all the time. And you wonder why this is, it's, you know, because they're, they're thinking positively, they're moving forward in their life, they're trying to improve, right? This is the way they think, this is the way they feel, and, and they're, they're Asking yourself and training yourself to be open and when you're open, you know, show me more You're telling show me more show me more and you see more you hear more. This is what we learn through spiritism as well and So it's this interesting point that um, There's a point where that individual that you can't help that individual you can communicate you can talk you can even show but in this case unless they're prepared yeah. to receive there is something There's nothing to, that you more that you could do to help them. It's part of them getting into a state to receive. Yeah. You know, it could be that simple. Receive yeah. maybe a good word here. And adding this to this, there is something in us that is part of our nature that which science explains called hedonic adaptation. We, because I've been in a position that with the, uh, with that thought. But if we had more if phenomena not. I had in this situation, in, the, in, this, in that position, in the beginning that I was learning spiritualism, but we, if we had more spiritual manifestation, a manifestation from the spirits, more people would believe and they would start to have more like interest and in discipline about their spiritual life and Okay, a few years ago, I've learned in uh, positive psychology that we have something called, that's a natural thing we have in every single one of us, have, called hedonic, hedonic adaptation. Hedonic adaptation is someone that does a plastic surgery. Guess what? In six months, this person will get used to that and say, I want more. Someone that says, just going to be happy with that perfect car. If that person, this is based on studies, this is scientific studies, okay? 
As soon as they got what they want, the house of their dreams, the car of their dreams, the girl, the husband, what, the babies, whatever their dreams, a few months later, we get used to that and we are not satisfied anymore. We want something else. We get used to good things and to bad things. They did um, a study on two groups. They called the volunteers that were um, healthy volunteers to take care of uh, sick people. They were doing nine hours week dialysis. Very bad shape. They were terminal ill. Very bad. So they gave, uh, they gave something to them and they would check on them every 90 minutes. They would have to pick a... Uh, uh, um, humor noise. Come on. A state of a state of. Yeah. Like an emoticon. No, an emoticon. Yeah, yeah. yeah it could yeah. be, but it was odd. How but feeling? they had to check how they're feeling. If they were sad, if they were happy, they they had a couple of choices, a few choices. So after months of this study, who was happier, the sick one or the healthy one? Which group was help, happier? What do you think? I don't think it has anything to do with it. Don't I think the people that are well will typically be happier, but was the study the opposite? No. Remember, I was talking about the healthy and spiritually healthy. Because the person who's sick has more, um, has more they have to has more they have, have to look forward to. The person who's happy doesn't have. Is already there. But remember they the hedonic adaptation. But yeah, reverse psychology. The happy one <laughs> became. Happy. In content, none, eventually. none were happy. They were the same. Wow, like Hedonic that. adaptation. Exactly. We get used to being sick, being sick, or being healthy. Right. Yeah, or happy. Hedonic yeah. adaptation. Right. Okay. We get used to. What like kind, we get used what to. What kind of adaptation? Hedonic. 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 Spell it, please. H e d o n i c. Hedonism. So, Hedonic, yeah. just like we get used Hedonism. to a certain smell that we don't we don't feel anymore, and if someone comes to our house and say, "Oh, you brought this nice scented whatever candle," oh, I don't even feel it anymore. The other day, I said to someone, "Oh, you you had a nice cologne," and and she said, "I don't even feel. I got used to." It. This is the adaptation everybody has. So. I thought years ago, if we had more phenomena, we would be like so aware of our the death, our life after death, boring, the death, the continuation so of easy. life, right? Death is continuation of life. Mm -hmm. We would be worried, not worried, but uh, working on the continuation of life, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the reality is no. The reality is we would get used Complacent. to wouldn't be interesting anymore. We would we know talk. about this and it's an interesting concept, right? I, I can share my own Good. sort of experience though, because Good. I started spiritism in the literature and I was reading about it and I, and I was like a believer, you know. But then almost a year later I witnessed my first phenomena and all of a sudden I had all these doubts. I said, this is BS, you know, this is, this is faking it. I was like, I was just like, and I was like, wait, don't you believe this stuff? And I, I had to like, really like kind of question it. Like, like what, like, cause it, it, like, I thought it was actually kind of weird. <laughs> you know, the first time I saw some phenomena like in the spiritist center and I'm, and so, I mean, like I had to kind of work it out with myself like, a little bit, but I, you know, I can, I, that's that's how I could say if I was having doubts like after studying spiritism for a year somebody who never studied it at all like you know it could go with either way I guess mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing is that we all have to work so many we have so many things to work on and I have nieces that they already don't believe in certain things that me at their age I used to believe for example devil I used to believe in the devil that the devil was as powerful as God. And it doesn't matter if I was good, it doesn't matter. The devil would come and mess up with my life and I, I could absolutely nothing. You, when you, I, you're paralyzed emotionally, physically. I am, you're I had no power. It, it doesn't matter if it was a saint, a good person, the devil had the right to do whatever he wanted 
right? So talking with my nieces about devil, they were like, this, I never, they said, kids, they were kids. I was talking with them about this. They were like, never believed in devil. There is no such a thing. So that's the, you know, the development of their spirits. There will be one day that naturally we will look for study groups like this and we will not have to, you know, have so much like research on to believe in a spiritual life. We will come with that knowledge so strong, like I was by myself. My my family was all, all Catholic family, and by myself I went at the age of sixteen to start my research on the spiritism because there was something in me that I didn't want to forget. Good. <laughs> we thank you for so, that. Um, and then, um, so we were talking about what kind of results, if we're not willing to take the action, what kind of results, will the phenomenon help? Um, and the last question I have for item two, just to wrap things up, um, when we're saying, um, how can we expect results if we're unwilling to take the action? What I was going to just put out there for you guys is what is the correct action for those who are interested Ooh. in spiritism? Um, Alan Kardec says in the, the last part of this, he said, um, you know, he says people don't get what they're asking for, then they say that spiritism, you know, there are no spirits. He says if they would look at the issue from a different perspective, they would understand that spirits are human souls, that after death we ourselves will be spirits, and that we too would be ill disposed to serve as playthings to satisfy the fantasies of the curious. So, um, what do you guys think? What's the right What's the right thing to do when somebody comes in for their first meeting, the first time? I I was lucky when I got here. I you know it was before the center expanded. There's only a few people in the English meeting. I, I had just come back from Brazil, and and I was new, and I said, oh, I just you know. And you were they, lost. They made the whole meeting about me. You know, everybody just sort of like turned, even like, you know, Luigi was up on the stage, but everybody like turned and faced me, and it, like I was just co having a conversation with everybody, kind of like, like here almost. And so it was kind of nice, but not everybody is, is that fortunate to, <laughs> that they can just stop the meeting and, and uh, make the meeting about me, you know, but which if it was up to me, every meeting would be about me, you know. <laughs> but, my favorite subject. <laughs> You can always get what you want in the constructs of harmony, of love. You can always, it, love is, it's, it, 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 it's in harmony. Because, you know, if you want to rule the world, you know, the world's not going to, it's going to push back. So that's going to be in harmony. So it's going to be difficult to do that. But it's possible. So. It, you know, like, that makes me think, too. Because yeah. a lot of times when we have somebody new here and then they come to the meeting and we, we do everything we can for them and they leave, we go, like, what did we do wrong? You know, nothing. and maybe it's not the reading thing. I don't have that question. No, I, 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 don't, yeah. I used to years ago, but not anymore. <clears throat> not anymore. Back to the the you know, receivership, being open and being able to receive. One thing you learn through spiritism is mm -hmm. is that you're not going to hear, and you're not going to see, and you're not going to change, you're not going to adapt unless you're ready, and you're not going to see, hear, or any of that. So when you decide, right, you as a person, you're ready to explore and be a little crack in the door even, right? That little piece that might be open there and something can slip through. So you learn that here as well. But you also learn back to the question is you learn the importance that think of the spirits that are helping us. They're more elevated than us. They're more intelligent than us. They're more morally advanced than us. That's their job to be here for us because we're growing. You learn that right away. So knowing that, and you, know, you use it, I forget what term you use. So their time and their effort is critically important. They're gonna waste it on making a show? No, this is what you learn through spiritism. It's not about the show. It's about helping others. This is what we're trying to do with people. It's very difficult for us. So we, we need help. That's why they're here. So the last thing I want to do is be messing around. They probably joke and all those things, but when it comes to us, we're a serious problem. We're ascending, we're elevating very slow. Imagine what they're putting up with. 
on how slow we are. So back to my message here is they have important work and we need to recognize that. And so as Steve mentioned just here at the end that, you know, they don't you know, like to participate their time in, in wasteful of their energy when they have real work to do to help us, help us as a humanity, help us individually to help us as a humanity, which means everyone on this planet. Um, because until everyone on this planet gets to a point where there is no evil, there's a lot of work to be done. So there's that's mm -hmm. my delivery on this piece. I started wrong in the spiritism. Uh, I didn't want to deal with the <clears throat> mediumship, nothing. I didn't want to see the phenomena. I was uh, against the phenomena. I was closed, eyes closed to the phenomena. I said, I just want the scientific and philosophic. I don't want to know about religion and the religious side. The, I don't care about it. I just, I know, of course, like Kardec said, let the curious come. They will realize by themselves the truth in that. But let them allow them to realize by themselves. That's what happened to me. I realized <laughs> what oh, was boy. what was good to me. Was was what was necessary. So, if I had to start today with the knowledge I have, I would start knowing myself, getting in touch with myself, and see. What is it that I am looking for? And be with eye, heart and mind open. Because that's not what happened to me. Because I came and I wanted, I had the huge ego. Not saying that I don't have today, but it's more under control. So <laughs> I do have, because I am a human being. And I project. So, but today I'm more receptive. My heart is open. My mind is open. And it's not because I've read this book four times and I have studied it a few times entirely. And I read the other books so many times. Every time I read it, it's like the first time. And it is beautiful because it's not about spiritism. Spiritism does not belong to anyone. Spiritism is the message, the message from the spirits that just like us came to talk to us. Remember you are a spirit. So it's about me. So if I get to learn myself, I will understand that I am a spirit and I, I have to unveil this, this science. Why? Because I ha I want my spirit not to to have the adherence. Help me with the word. Adherence. Adherence. Adherence to what? To the body, to the material life, mm -hmm. the world of forms that don't Buddha used. You don't want to be connected to this the words of the world of forms, like Buddha used to say that the problem is that we put all our faith in the world of forms, and that's the and yes. that's why. It, the reason why it is because we are too attached to the body, to the material world. So, as I go and I, as I unveil all this knowledge and experience and try to apply in my life, I become more spiritualized naturally without forcing me like I used to. In the past, I wanted to live like this. Well, some people are obsessed to this form, obsessed to this body. Exactly. It's just, it's, 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 it's just, it's just a dollars. momentary thing in this, yeah. this endless, infinite so, life of perfection. Uh, so applying, 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 <laughs> living. You know, yes, like being happy going through it. And I, I mean, in, in harmony with, with yeah. yourself and others. I'm sorry because it's, it's time for us it's to kind of end our Ooh, end discussion on this. Did we get to finish number but two? I, I, just, I, I just want to, I just want to kind of wrap it up because Scott said something. You know that related to the question I asked about what do we, you know, how do we talk to uh, to the newcomers here? Oh, okay. and uh, and he said something that just spurred on me that instead of trying to talk to the newcomers, maybe we should listen to them. You know, and and this is a good segue just to talk about things we're doing here um, that we are 
you know, Cynthia started the Thursday night um, group. I want to say attend the mental fraternal. <laughs> spiritual, uh, spiritual spiritual counseling and uh, uh, spiritual. It's a spiritual treatment. It's treatment. For spiritual treatment, and they gave the name different than the one that I gave. It's they gave it fraternal talk. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, the spiritual treatment. They were actually trying to ask me what what would be a good name for it. Yeah. Too, so it cause we didn't. We didn't Thank say you. fraternal. Come up with something. If you guys have a better name. Because yeah, it just doesn't translate. Fraternal counseling. Fraternal. It doesn't really sound good in English. Fraternal it's, talk. That's the idea. Then you guys give a better name. Yeah. It's because it's really about uh, helping people. Not a, it's not about trying to make them you know, convert them or anything. It's really about re meet, meeting them at their level and offering yeah. them like help directly. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, actually, it's, it's listening and healing. Yeah. So, healing. Yeah. So, and counseling. And That's that that might be a great way to attract yeah. uh, people here. Mm -hmm. They they might become interested in spiritism. Or they might not. It right. doesn't really matter, right. you know. We, right. we, we hope that they'll like spiritism, but um, no, we're, we're not. We're not measuring statistics or anything like that, or seeing yeah. who stays and who doesn't. Yeah, um, it's, you know, it's probably what I think. Probably the people that come to that meeting, if they like what they see there, you know, if they get probably the first thing they need to get the help, you right. know, and sort of get back on their feet or, or whatever, or right. or help with problems with their family or with their health or or whatever with relationships. Um, Maybe they'll they'll notice like some of the people there seem to have it together a little bit, <laughs> you know, set a good example, right. and they'll want what they have, mm -hmm. and they'll and they'll start to do what they do to you know. Yeah. On, so on, on that note of example, you want to start a group that has do this uh, like psychotherapy. No, no. No. I misunderstand. It's, it's on Thursday. It's the it's spiritual treatment. Here. Counseling. Healing. Spiritual treatment where we listen to people. Yeah. So there, uh, whatever spiritual tr troubles are undergoing some difficult times, and they, the people there are going through something, some difficult times, and they want someone to listen to them without judgment, without. Which was psychotherapy. No. no, it's in the spiritist center. It's free of charge. It's not psychotherapy. Right. In this, it, we cannot say that word. If we say that word. People might sue us. We cannot use that word. But it is, sir. <laughs> it is. You are right. But we just cannot say no that. No license required to talk over Yes. Okay. We cannot your, say that. But anyway. And your life. Disclaimer. Huh? And your life. And we are life. Okay. No, but. What did you say? I mean. And, uh, we're life. I was just kidding. We're life. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. But, um. But yeah, and that's just sort of like sort of just to talk about that so people know if somebody's watching on Facebook, Thank they know you, yeah. they can come here Thursday night, seven PM at Broward Spirit Society. Yeah. Twenty one eighty three North Power Line Road, Pompano Beach. Um, also tomorrow night, Wednesday night, we have the lecture here uh, in English, the Luigi Hosha is talking about the good man. The good man. I don't yes. know what makes him think he's qualified to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're excited to see Luigi. He, he's he's it's had a, some it's an aspirational talk. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see you, uh, Luigi standing before us once again. So it's well, I don't know if he'll stand. I don't know. I hope so. We'll see it. Probably, <laughs> I think he'll huh? be sitting. <laughs> so, and I don't know if there's any other announcements that, um, you know, our magnetism workshop was very good for everyone. Attended. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Really um, good. We probably won't have another one for about another year or so. That's true. Uh, that it's going to be by the on demand. Yeah. So that was really an amazing experience. I'm sorry I couldn't join. I would have been yeah. happy if you to see come, you in action. If anyone would like to be in this training, let me know or let you know so we can put together a yeah, group if, and then yeah, if people are, if are we have interested in enough, it, we can, yeah. They, there's ways. There's other ways to find out about it here. Um, if you go to the public meetings, so after the public meetings, we always have the public passes, yeah. um, which is like it's like a good way to align the chakras and and for people that might have like deeper health issues, we we offer treatments here too. So. There's, there's ways to get involved if, if you need it. Mm. Um, and uh, also, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. here at Brown Spirit Society, Cynthia does a, a meditation, which is a good way to know yourself, get to know yourself. <laughs> so, um, and next week, we'll start back again on item number three in chapter two. <laughs> what is spiritism? All right.
So I'm going to end up broadcast. So thank you, everybody who joined us, and we'll see you next week.